And Hector Macho Camacho will need 300% tonight. Camacho has painted the picture of this fight being a guy who's a hero versus a guy who wants to be. With some more words about the charismatic champion, here's Larry Merchant. I look at Hector Camacho as a sort of Rambo Liberace, he-man and showman. He's one of those rare athletes, as Muhammad Ali once put it, who dares to be great. His speed of hand matched only by his speed of foot and mouth. A dynamic package of energy and talent and raw nerve and arrogance. He needs to be a star. The question is whether in the lightweight division, a division with more good fighters than any other division, there's anyone who can really challenge him. And that's what we'll get a clue to tonight. For Edwin Rosario can fight, and he can punch, and he has been brought to a nice, quiet rage by the constant hectoring of Hector Camacho. We're here to find out if that means war, and we'll find out in a few minutes. The village of Campanillas is a short drive from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's the kind of place that no one leaves, and visitors would wonder how its inhabitants spend their day. It's a simple life, one that provides a perfect setting for the story of a small town boy who makes good. Edwin Rosario is that small town boy, and at one time was good enough to become lightweight champion. Like his fellow neighbors, Edwin, or Chapo as he's called, continues to reside in this area as he lives a life far different from most fighters. Well, this street is where I grew up since I was uh, four years old. There were only fishermen who lived in this block. In fact, it was with them that I learned how to fish. They were all much older than me, and I really did not have any friends that were my age. There's no doubt that Edwin Rosario seems more comfortable in the water than in a boxing ring. For days at a time, Edwin and his friends go to El Ojo del Buey, the eye of the whale, to do nothing but fish. Fishing is something that I have in my blood. It is something that makes me feel very happy and very content. I always come here, and I have been coming here since I was nine years old. There are times when I don't catch anything, but that does not mean that there are no fish. It is just that there are times when the fish don't come into shore, and times when they do. On this day, Edwin came up empty-handed, but was more than happy to share his favorite fish story. There was a day when the sea got very dark, so I went down and I harpooned a fish right through the ice. I was on my way back up without a spear, and I looked down and I saw a tremendous shark under me. I did not have anything in my hand, and my heart began to tremble very fast. The shark passed under me, he turned around and came back again. I swam to the boat so fast, thinking that the shark was going to get me by the feed. Needless to say, Edwin was quite relieved that that one got away. His rituals and lifestyle bear more of a resemblance to the boy down the street rather than the boxer next door, whether it's with his family or even at the gym where he trains. Upon entering, it's customary to shake hands and greet everyone inside. But in Puerto Rico, there are some customs that most Americans would not quite accept cockfighting. Here in Puerto Rico, it is one of the best forms of entertainment. It is entertaining for the young and especially for the older people. While growing up at home, this was Edwin's backyard, not quite the place to play catch. This is where he helped his father condition their many roosters to become fighting cocks. My father used to wake me up at six o'clock every Saturday and Sunday mornings to train these cocks. Here is one of the shacks where I would train a cock when I was very young. Just like a boxer who must run, it was my job to run the cocks in circles for 35 minutes a day. When a fighting cock loses, it usually means death. But to Edwin, it's not quite like losing your favorite dog or cat. When the cock loses, I don't feel bad at all. I feel the same and even happy because I am going to eat him. 
Today, Edwin eats many of his meals at La Cueva de la Pirata, the Pirate's Cove, where he's also known to frequently provide the entertainment. I enjoy singing very much. I have begun to lose my shyness since I first had the opportunity to sing in front of people at the Pirata. In the last few years, my singing has become very sentimental and I can feel my emotions rising when I sing this type of music. Maybe I'm not going to be the next uh, Julio Iglesias, but I am going to be the next champion of the world on June 13th. You know, we should point out there is another story as regards the challenger Edwin Rosario. There were recent reports that he had failed more than one brain scan test given in various locations. Well, that flap has pretty much been put to rest, but it is worth, we think, looking back on. Although a report was spread, that Edwin had failed four tests in four different states. That is absolutely untrue. The fact uh, is, he did fail two tests, both given in Philadelphia. He was advised by the New York State Athletic Commission doctor to go back and rest a couple of weeks in Puerto Rico and then take the same EEG and EKG again which he did in his native Puerto Rico. In addition to what is considered the most efficient barometer of boxing head injuries, the CAT scan, Rosario passed all three tests and was pronounced fit to resume his career. The CAT scan was a reconfirmation that everything was okay with uh, Rosario. A medical report did substantiate the findings of the CAT scan and the EEG, but critics could point to the fact that the report emanated in Puerto Rico, where there is a vested interest in the career of a local hero. The test in Puerto Rico is, uh, is of much better quality than the test would, would have been in the New York State Commission. The bottom line is, there is a medical clearance for Edwin Rosario to fight tonight. There will be detractors, but those closest to him are supportive. The doctor who supervised the test that Edwin is completely normal and fit for the fight. Meanwhile, Jimmy Rosario will make his way into the ring as the challenger. Edwin Rosario, I beg your pardon, will make his way into the ring. And that is Jimmy Montoya behind Edwin Rosario. And that's a rather unusual development. Yeah, it's a bit of upsmanship by the Rosario camp. Jimmy Montoya, as we pointed out earlier, the California trainer of Camacho, whom he fired, is now going to be in the corner of the challenger. While Camacho has a former secondary second as his chief sec secondary second of Rosario as his chief second. So uh, Felix Pintor, so they should know everything there has to be known about each other. <laughs> it's got a trading seconds, if you will. So Rosario in the ring. Puerto Rican flag being waved inside the ring. Well, Rosario just trying to get warm. A lot of pride and passion here among the large Puerto Rican crowd. In fact, Rosario puts puts down Camacho as a New Yorican. Mainland Puerto Ricans sometimes use that term in a derogatory sense for those Puerto Ricans who have emigrated to the U.S. New oh. Yorican. We touched on the fact that these two are such different personalities. Rosario, very inward kind of guy, and of course Camacho. He's all out there. Well, looking at Jimmy Mantoy, he told me in the back that uh, he has a way. And Camacho will make Rosario wait for him in the ring. That's an age-old tactic, Ray. Sometimes it works, but I think in this case, 
Rosario's been that route, so it shouldn't phase him. And we should point out one thing, too. Custom Moto, a couple of years ago, said that if Rosario would match up with Hector Camacho, Rosario would win the fight. And Tomato said he just has better anticipation. Now, that was said a couple of years ago by the late Customato, and whether or not that holds true tonight, of course, remains to be seen. Looking very calm. He was all business when we talked with him the other day. Very serious individual, and um, I think he has a degree in psychology. So he claims that uh, Camacho is not educated, and he was able to just keep quiet and maintain his composure. I think the other thing that's going to be interesting tonight, too, Ray and Larry, is the fact that he actually changed his style. He was a counterpuncher, and all of a sudden, either he was told or he figured out that he wasn't really being a crowd pleaser that way, and he changed his style. So it'll be interesting to see who shows well, up tonight. Well, the thing here is, is that he is going to move forward against a fighter who customarily moves around and tries to weaken his opponent before going in for the kill and using his fast hands. That is to Rosario's benefit because the customary way to beat a Rosario, a good puncher who generally does move forward, is to back him up. And that's not what Camacho usually does. Here is Hector Camacho. This outfit cost eight thousand dollars. Understated, don't you think? Yeah. My response is, I wonder in the new tax bill whether he's going to need an exemption to get a write-off. <laughs> that is Hector Camacho's six-year-old son, who is with him and being held aloft by the champion. Well, the Macho Man has center stage right now. Whether he has it about 50 minutes from now remains to be seen. Unblemished record of Hector Camacho. That's cost an awful lot for batteries for that outfit also. Here's the tail of the tape, and Larry, really very little between these two. Uh, there's one pound, one year, and one fight difference between their records. And here is our punch stat, which will give us a quantitative look at the fight, measuring the number of punches thrown rather than their quality. And Camacho is thrown, as you see, 70 to 73 punches around by average, lands about 30. Here are the jabs he threw. You see he throws a lot of jabs, but he uses it defensively. He only lands about a third of the jabs. And against the same opponents, Rosario throws approximately the same number of punches lands more of them boy if they both throw that many punches we'll see a lot of action tonight and here are his jabs he throws fewer jabs but he's more efficient when he does throw it and the wbc rules as always 10 point must system three judges will score the fight there is no standing gate caught fighter can only be saved for the bell in the last round of the ring doctor unlike in most cases can stop the fight want to point out one other thing harold letterman who has been our in-house judge, if you will, here for HBO. Will not be with us tonight. Just about an hour ago, the commissioner of boxing in the state of New York, Jose Torres, said, nope, you worked to fight, Harold. And so as a result of that, he worked the Julio Cesar Chavez championship fight a little bit earlier tonight. As a result of that, Torres said, no, you cannot work for HBO. We are not very pleased about that decision, but nevertheless, that's what we have to live with tonight. So we will not have Harold Letterman. Right now, let's go to the ring announcer, Frank Shane, for the pre-fight introduction. the 13th, this is Resurrection Day. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the world-famous Madison Square Garden, the showplace of the nation. Tonight, Don King Productions Incorporated, Don King, the dynamic premier promoter of all promoters in association with Madison Square Garden, take great pleasure in presenting the World Boxing Council World Lightweight Championship fight scheduled for 12 rounds between the challenger Edwin El Chapo Rosario and the WBC champion Hector Macho Camacho. This WBC championship fight is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, Jose Suleiman, president, and is approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, and the chairman, Jose Chegui Torre, and the commissioners, Rose Stratman and Jimmy Dupree. <clears throat> the deputy commissioners, Petey Della, Jack Graham, Marvin Cohn. The WBC judges, Louis Rivera from New York City, Tony Castellano from New York City, and from Detroit, Michigan, Dr. Stuart Kirschenbaum. The timekeeper is Cecilio Pedraja, counting for the knockdowns at the bell, referee Johnny Lobianco, the doctors in attendance at ringside, Dr. Frank S. Folk, chief medical physician, Dr. Billy Layton, and Dr. Barry Jordan. The referee in the ring at this time, Arthur Mercanti. This contest, 12 rounds for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. In this corner, he's wearing black trunks trimmed with white. He weighed in at 134 pounds. His home is Santurce, Puerto Rico. He is a former WBC lightweight champion. He is the number one contender. His career record, he won 23 bouts. He lost only one and registered 19 exciting KOs. Here is a very capable challenger, Edwin El Chapo Rosario. And his very worthy adversary, he's wearing red, white, and blue trunks. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He's from New York City. He was the 78, 79, 80 Golden Glove champion. He won the, NAS, the North American Boxing Federation Championship. He was the WBC Junior Lightweight Champion. He's a current World Boxing Council lightweight champion. He's undefeated in 28 professional fights, exploding 15 stunning knockouts along the way. Here is the very worthy champion, Hector Macho Camacho. 12 rounds. Referee Arthur McCarthy will deliver the instruction to the boxer. <laughs> One second, chief second. Chief second only, one second in the corner here. One second only. No, one second only. All right, good evening. Good evening, Ed and Hector. This contest is for the lightweight championship of the world. It'll be, uh, you will listen to all the commands. I will enforce all the rules, and you must obey the rules. Shake hands now, and come out boxing at the bell. Shake hands. So Arthur Mercanti, the referee with the instructions, crowd pretty much in the corner of Hector Camacho, although Edwin Rosario did receive a pretty good round of applause. You can look for Rosario to try to put pressure on Camacho from the bell in the hopes of using him up and slowing him down for the second half of the fight. There was some thought in Rosario's camp 
that because of all the training, chopping wood and that sort of thing, upper body building that Camacho did, that he may slow down in the later rounds. No, I, I disagree with that. I think the fact that he's only stronger, he's not heavier, so his mobility should remain the same. I have never seen Camacho slow down in the later rounds. You saw Rosario kind of point to his ear. Perhaps he thought that Camacho butted him. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. Both fighters came at the same time with the heads, and uh, it was an accidental head, but fortunately there was no damage. Here Camacho is on his bicycle, using his jab, and pretty much utilizing the ring. With uh, Rosario, Rosario tried to cut the ring off because Rosario is better inside. He's a better inside fighter. He's a very good counter puncher, too. What he's going to have to do, Barry, is slow the movement down of Camacho. Good body shot by Camacho. Both guys respect each other's punching power. Left hook by Camacho. The way Camacho fought Jose Luis Ramirez to win the title was get in, punch, punch, get out. Well, the key to beating uh, Rosario is, is beat him to the punch and stand outside. Stand mobile. You can't stand there and exchange punch for punch. These guys are really going at it. So um, this first round, anything can happen, Barry. They both are still a little tight. That's why you see both fighters uh, somewhat reluctant to throw a punch. It has been said that Rosario has had problems with what his camp called tricky fighters. Watch for the left hook of Rosario because of the way he's positioned himself, he's trying to get that hook in. Good left hand by Camacho. He caught Rosario off balance. Now, one thing about Rosario, he has experience. So normally when Camacho throws his punches, Rosario cover up and try to spin his opponent. There is some talk that Rosario may have a suspect chin. You see the way Rosario covered up very well there. Very good defense. Henry Ramirez, he made the mistake of uh, trying to punch too soon and wearing himself out. Here he's very patient. Trying to cut the ring off of Camacho. Camacho's very fast hands, very fast feet. Always keeps his balance. And a good left hand again. That one got Rosario's attention. We will remind you that it is possible that both corners may speak in the Spanish language. Rosario's will for sure. And we have Tito Alba in the corner to translate at the bell. That was a good round for Hector Camacho. As the challenger was trying to time his movement and trying to hit him on the move at which he is usually very good. Wait, give me the best thing. But usually he doesn't have Camacho nice in shot. front of him. Good shot, good shot. We almost got him. Keep him boxing. Move, move, move all the time. All the time, move. Spit down. Get the body now, okay? Get the body now. He's already hurt, okay? Take your time. There you see Camacho and with that fast hands darting in. A tentative right jab followed by a very good left hand. There it is once again. Amazingly quick reflex. You have to use the combinations before he does. What a lot of us would like to see, Ray, is what happens when and if Rosario can land a good punch. Well, Rosario has to get his punches in a lot faster. He has to be first. That was a good right hand. Did too much, do too much damage. Camacho gives a lot of head things. And that's exactly what they said in Rosario's corner. And right now, Rosario not able to heed that advice. Rosario has, he starts off very slow. And here, with, because of Camacho's uh, uh, great speed, he can't afford to stay on the outside too long needs to get inside. When we talked to him, he said he was not in great shape for the Ramirez fight. He figured he had to go out and knock him out because he didn't think he could go the distance, and he himself got knocked out. He said he wasn't in top condition for the Howard Davis fight, and he won a very narrow decision in that fight. Rosario has a few problems with his wrist, and uh, he says as well now. He's given enough rest. Another right hand by Rosario. But again, it caught Camacho backing up. Trying to cut the ring off Rosario. 
it's difficult sometimes and to, trying to slow down a mobile southpaw because it's tough to get inside. Dig a lot of hooks to the body, to the midsection of the southpaw, works very well. Rosario will have to time Camacho's punches. Every time Camacho throws a jab, he needs to step inside and get his punches off. Another very quick left hand by Camacho. Darts in, sticks him, steps out. Also, I feel that Camacho's a little too elusive up, upstairs, so Rosario needs to go to the body to slow down that movement. Counter-punching right hand by Camacho, behind the right hand by Rosario. Rosario got Camacho in the corner for a second, but Camacho got away. And another good left hand, and it stunned Rosario. Camacho at times dropped that right hand, and that's why I'm looking forward to a hook from Rosario. Rosario has a very solid, very uh, powerful left hook. It's the left hook he's been able to put a lot of opponents down. And a five-punch combination. Four jabs and then a left hand. Hike, hike. Stop holding, stop holding. And Arthur Mercanti warning Hector Camacho to stop holding. That's something that has gone on throughout the career. Hector Camacho. Earlier tonight, another fight on this card. Mike Tyson continuing his rampage through the heavyweight division, beating Reggie Gross in one round with a big left hand. And we should point out that contractually, HBO is not allowed to show so much as a highlight of that fight. <laughs> You have, to, you have to use both hands. If he comes running, hit him in the, on the chest. I'm out of distance. No, but we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll be there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. I felt during that last round that Rosario was getting a little closer in timing Camacho. If he can keep Camacho moving for the next three or four rounds, we will have to see whether Camacho can continue this movement over the remaining rounds. He has been extremely up-tempo through the first two. That was a good shot by Rosario. And again, it was not going to be one punch to uh, slow a guy like Camacho down. Uh, Kamat, I mean, uh, Rosario throws his right hand. He needs to follow up with that good, clean left hook. Because you notice as Rosario throws his right hand, Camacho is steady moving to his right. So he comes in, in front of a, a good left hook. There's the left hook. Very good exchange and a good right hand, too. And that backs Camacho away for the moment. That's what I was talking about, Barry. He has to come back. That right hand gets in, hits him on the chest. So a good left hook will catch him. This is a lot of movement for Camacho, and, and like Larry stated, why not keep up this type of tempo? He did keep it up pretty much against Jose Luis Ramirez, although he took a bit of a breather in the middle round. And Rosario having, so far, his best round. Now Rosario is starting to uh, close the gap between the two and start to land some punches of his own. Camacho now will start to go against the ropes. And you see what happens against the ropes. That's to Rosario's advantage. Camacho the counter punch that time. Combination by Camacho. Rosario did step back. I 
I'm waiting for Zorozaro to go to the body sometimes. He gets in position, and he doesn't do anything. He was a little bit short with that uppercut, but it did look open. He started to measure his right hand. That was a right hand to the body by Rosario. Camacho retaliates with a couple of, uh, right hooks to the midsection. Crowd starting to wake up to Rosario a little bit here, Ray. There's the Camacho. Look. Camacho on the ropes and Rosario hammers it. Good round so far for Edwin Rosario. effort and he is beginning to reach Camacho. Okay, all the time see you go this side all the time. He's not gonna be able to hit you, okay? Yeah, start watching the guy, okay, okay. Come here. Again. Come again. Come again. Come again. It's ours. We're winning. Deep. Uh, downstairs, he cannot be beat you. He is uh, already stopping. In terms that Rosario would understand as a committed fisherman, he's starting to get a few bites. Camacho comes out very up tempo. Flurry of punches, but good counter punching by Rosario. Rosario is still trying to cut the ring off. Camacho's corner telling him to move to his own right, only to his own right. Well, because the reason is because he'll get away from the right hand of Rosario. Camacho just tied his man up. You stop holding. Now he's getting a warning again. Arthur Mercanti, second time, second time that Mercanti has had to warn Hector Camacho. They talked about that in the rules meeting. So Arthur Mercanti obviously has been looking for that since the opening bell. Two warnings now for Camacho. Rosario went to the body that time. We need to see more body shots thrown by Rosario. See, Camacho is just able to get in and get out so quickly, it's difficult to, uh, for you to land, get the balance in there and land some good shots. You have to slow down his mobility, and the best way to do it is to go to the body. Neither man is marked. This is the fourth round, halfway through. Rosario coming off his biggest round of the fight. One thing about it, Barry, um, Rosario is making Camacho work. He's really trying to push him to the limit. Yeah, there's no question about it. We've seen Camacho a few times. This is as tested as we've ever seen him. Got a left hand in there. The left hand fell a little short. Right hand by Rosario, a little bit short also. Again, uh, Rosario is content for one hand. A little bit of blood alongside the nose of Edwin Rosario. Good right hand. That was a very good right hand by but Rosario. Cut. There's a cut over the left eye of Camacho. Try to see just how bad that cut is. It seems to be above the left eye yeah. in the corner. Barry, look at the way the expression on uh, Camacho. He's never been cut before. Now, this could uh, turn the tables around. We'll see what effect it has on Hector Camacho. Another right hand. There's not a lot of blood, but Rosario scoring pretty consistently with the right hand here. The blood is starting to drip into Camacho's eyes. A decisive round for the challenger. Blood on the champion. 
Not bad. Close your eyes. Okay. Lay back. Hold okay. his son's heart. Okay, jump. And stay away from his right hand all the time. He's doing a good job. He's caught over here too, okay? Close your eyes. He's not bad. Okay? Put him over here. Ellos tipos taking away from his right hand. Tenemos que tirar con las dos manos ahora. Ya tuviste que lo lastimamos, ¿viste? We have to keep fighting with both hands, so two hands. Work with him. Work, working with two hands. Vamos a estar tirando hasta el tiempo. Out, out. The way this fight is progressing, Camacho is going to have to stand and fight and try to back up Rosario very soon. Don Thibodeau, the ace cut man in Camacho's corner, saying it's not serious, it's not very bad. Time will tell. Well, we have a different Rosario now. That was a good left hand by Camacho, and Rosario holds on. I was saying that we have a different Rosario. He's a little more confident, and Camacho is trying to take the confidence from him. Another good left hand by Camacho. And Camacho doing exactly what Larry Merchant just said he should do or has to do. You can see Camacho rubbing the eye. He's never been cut, Ray. And, uh, you know, I'm curious to see his reaction. The, apparently the blood is flowing to his eyes and it's starting to impair his vision. A left hand and Camacho's hurt. Rosario is right on him. That's the left hook, Barry, I was talking about. And a right hand by Rosario who moves in for the kill. Camacho against the ropes. He's hurt, Barry. He's ready to go now. And what's the left hook again? And the cut Camacho got is in serious trouble here. And he's got a long way to go. A minute and 50 seconds. The Camacho trying to survive. Rosario trying to put him away. Camacho now bleeding from the nose as well as the eye. Help holding! Wait! Still a world of time to go for Hector Camacho. Rosario's working the body and uh, still taking his time here. Not wasting any punches. He doesn't want to get arm weary. He puts Camacho in some serious trouble. Camacho danced his way out of harm's reach. And now he's tying his man up. And remember, against Ramirez, Rosario had him down twice and might have gotten a little arm weary. There was a hard shot. And Camacho again is in trouble. 30 seconds remaining. Fifth round. Camacho legs are gone. He's still rubbly leg. Arthur McCanty looking at that eye very closely. Inside of 10 seconds. Camacho's pushing the doctor away from him. It's all right. You're all right. Oh, Camacho no, has never been in this kind of trouble. You're all right, Hector? Now we'll see right. the kind of champion he is. He's getting tired. Get away with his right hand, man. Boxing, okay? He's getting damn tired now, okay? I want you to box. Move. There you see Rosario in full control, not getting hurried, but Camacho showing some smarts and resourcefulness and not allowing him to land another full shot while he was coming in. This is the test of a champion right here. Round number six.
Long way to go. You notice the way that um, Rosario was able to put Camacho in trouble. He threw the right hand, and he followed with the, with the left hook. Perfect combination for a southpaw. Camacho on his bicycle now. Now you see a different Camacho because he uh, respects the puncher power of Rosario. In the last round, he came out and tried to brawl, and obviously that was not the ticket. Well, Camacho proved one thing if he, proved, if he had to prove anything. He has a good chin. Still a lot of movement from Camacho. He looks a little fresher uh, this sixth round. He's doing a great deal of movement. Took the right hand again. Rosario being very patient. Blood from the nose of Hector Camacho. But that eye has not opened up again here in the sixth round. Well, they want Camacho to stay away from that right hand. And in doing so, they tell him to continue to move to his right, not to his left. Rosario is not wasting any energy. Just steady plotting his way in. Rosario now, well, he's still doing the right thing, but I think he needs to get some punches off instead of waiting. See, what's happening, he's allowing Camacho to clear his head again. Because in moving in, like Rosario is doing, he needs to throw a punch, throw a jab at least. To get closer. He needs to get closer. Camacho going downstairs on Edwin Rosario, and now again talks to Camacho I think though that was for low blows not for holding watch that low blow and you heard Arthur McCanny say watch the low blow Rosario is still trying to get that left hook in because he knows how effective it was in that fifth round Camacho going back to the tactics that were successful in the first two rounds now. Or Staying Rosario. away, ducking in and ducking out. Rosario made a mistake of letting Camacho get back into the fight. Let Camacho get his rhythm back. A lot of punches still in the fifth round, so Rosario could be a little arm weary here. time Camacho came back re-established himself by dominating it with his quickness keep the hands upstairs deep breath look at me we have to throw more I want you to throw more punches more combination he's hurt Arthur McCanty, the referee, warned about the low blows. There was a right that was low, and the left that followed it was low. So of those four punches that were on the border, two of them definitely landed low. Faster, let's go. Okay. It seemed to me, Ray, that the challenger tried too hard okay, to land go. a big punch in the last round and consequently landed very few of any kind of punches. Well, he was well in a way, got a little over anxious because he was able to hurt Camacho, wasted a lot of punches, a lot of energy, too. Seventh round, and again, Camacho ducks in, sticks, and ducks out. Camacho is really fresh now, back to his old self. Uh, Rosario looks to be fresh, too. He was a little arm-weary in the sixth round. Didn't throw too many punches. And he was told about that in his corner. Now Rosario seems to want to pick up the pace and get inside a little bit more. That's where he has been effective. Good left hand by Camacho. A very good left hand by Camacho. A 
Again, it takes a couple of punches. Doesn't take one punch for Camacho because he's so mobile. He's gonna be moving. Well, there were a couple of punches, and he came right back, and now he jumps on Rosario. You can almost sense Camacho's confidence come back here. Oh, yes, because like now his punches are starting to land now. Both fighters exchanged some vicious shots to the body and to the head. Camacho on the offense now. You can tell when both guys get on with because they start just to move. Camacho's moves, don't throw too many punches, just a jab. On the other hand, Rosario uh, content to get a breather and not throw any punches, but stay aggressive. We should point out also that that cut over the left eye has not bled for the last two rounds. but as Ray Leonard mentioned, he doesn't seem to want to double up on it. That movement of Camacho is not helping at all. Again, he's in position to throw it. Rosario off balance a little. So the end of Rosario has man. had the one big round in the fight. I now have the score after seven rounds, four rounds for Camacho, three for Rosario. Well, we go from the ridiculous to the sublime here on HBO. June 23rd, we start our daily coverage of Wimbledon 86. That's Monday through Friday, 5 to 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the highlight show at 11.30 p.m. Larry Merchant, myself, Arthur Ashe, and Billie Jean King will all be at the All England Tennis and Croquet Club. <laughs> It's the end right now. You have to work out real hard. I told you, he's going in the nine. We're in the second half of the fight. Let's see if Camacho can sustain his pace. Three-punch combination by Camacho. Rosario can't, he can't allow for Camacho to get his punches off because Camacho is so quick. Rosario has retaliated. Once Camacho throws his punches, he should throw his punches back. throws his punches and ties this man up. That's a very smart move on his part. Watch your heads. Again, Camacho's in the corner. This is when Rosario needs to go to work. The left Watch hook appears. Head. Right now, Rosario Ray seems to just kind of be pawing a little bit. Well, that's the mistake he's making, Barry, because he's waiting for Camacho, and Camacho, quite naturally, is going to take advantage of it. Get his punches in, because Camacho can deliver maybe a dozen punches um, before you raise your hands. getting his punches Stop off quicker now. Now, can Arthur McCanty 
tells Hector Camacho not to hold and hit. That's the third time. And now you have to think that Hector Camacho is walking a thin line of having a point taken away from him and a fight that is seemingly as close as this one is that could have a profound effect. Well, Jimmy Jacobs, uh, the manager of Rosario, stated that he should take a point when Camacho hold and hit after a few couple warnings. We have yet to see that. There was a good right hand by Rosario, his best punch in I'm two rounds. We've seen some very good punches thrown by uh, Rosario, but by far Camacho's thrown more punches. Break. Let's have a break. Circus, but I still have the circus ahead. You can do it better than him. I want you to keep moving to your left. Keep moving to the left and use the hook. And there in the middle, Livingston Bramble, WBA champion. Classy head. Obviously rooting for Hector Camacho. A fight between Camacho and Bramble. Much talked about. Big money fight. But Edwin Rosario has other ideas. Okay. Keep on going on this. I noticed Ray in that last round that Camacho stayed on the ropes a few times. You think he's getting tired? Well, he's in very good shape, I feel like, and uh, maybe he was taking, I think he was taking a breather. But that was the mistake he made earlier in the fifth round. That's just about the juncture of the fight that he did that against Ramirez, too. Good shot by Camacho, that and Rosario holds on. That punch rocked Rosario. There. Camacho uh, has resurgence of strength. And I think Rosario's hurt a little bit here. Camacho moves in. Rosario took a deep breath when he backed away from Hector Camacho a moment ago. Slight puffiness on the right eye of uh, Rosario from those left hands of Camacho. To the body, Rosario goes. Trying to slow down the movement of Camacho. Stop holding that head. Let's go, play. And again, holding and hitting. Except that I think that time he might have been talking to Rosario. Rosario, right hand. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Ray, do you get the feeling? But Rosario is head hunting too much, not trying to slow him down in the body. And doing so, he is head hunting. Oh, he's, he's starting to get a little fatigued now. I think he's missed a, a number of shots that um, he could easily score by going to the body. And that swelling under the right eye of Rosario is starting to get a little worse. Camacho really starting to extend him here. We'll see, and also Rosario is concentrating on the head, and uh, he's forgetting how fast that Camacho can move around the ring. I'm holding, wait, wait. Another good left hook by Camacho. Every time the Rosario throws one punch, Camacho comes back with two or three. That's the left hook once again, Barry. Works every time. It's all elementary. You throw the right hand, you come back with that beautiful left hook. Very quick, too. Arthur McCanty again about his fourth warning to both fighters to watch their heads. And again, Camacho, about a five punch combination. Very quick hands.
Camacho appears to have seized command of the fight at this point. Don't let him work too much. Take that. Take that glove. Put some more tape around it. Put some tape around it. I need the glove tape. I need the glove tape. Let's see Camacho as he comes in, throws his furious rallies. Tremendous hand speed. I have a feeling, Ray, that if he wanted to fight that way, if that was in his character and that was in his personality, he could be giving a lot of trouble to Rosario. But of course, he knows he can dominate the fight from outside. Take that glove, right. Stay there. Hector Camacho in that round, according to our punch stat figures, as we have a momentary timeout while they tape the glove of Camacho through 30 more punches than did Edwin Rosario. Round number 10. All right, watch that low blow again. I'm telling you now, again. And again, a warning for a low blow to Hector Camacho from Arthur McCanty. Camacho has found a resurgence of stress from somewhere. He's become rejuvenated. A lot more movement. He's throwing, throwing a lot more uh, punches as in the earlier rounds. All right, break, break. Well, as you mentioned earlier, right, too, for every one punch that Rosario throws, it seems that Camacho counters with three. And that's really been the factor here. And another good example of just that. chant of macho macho and again four punches that time back rosario off you gotta give it to camacho i mean the kid can fight i mean he's been hurt in the fifth round severely by a left hook by rosario and came back weather the storm and came back rosario's been making a mistake uh for the past five rounds and not coming back with anything camacho retaliates with four or five Unanswered blows. That right hand was caught largely on the gloves. Camacho's nose has been bleeding for the past six rounds now. A slight swelling over the, over the bridge of his nose. Due to the right hand by Rosario. Again, take one, give two. Rosario's just trying to load up. He's trying to get one big punch in there like he did in the fifth round. Not going to work with a kid like Camacho. This uh, speed, mobility. There he tried to throw a combination. Watch it, watch it, You're getting too close to the heads now, right? Take it easy. They want Camacho to back Rosario up. He yelled from the corner. Seconds remaining here in round number 10. Again, Rosario's head hunting. The body's there. The body's going to be there. You need these next two rounds big, kid. You need them. I'm telling you. You gotta have them. Close your eyes. We need these two more rounds, okay? Okay? And when you get to the row, when you be real tight, fight him too. When he throw punches, you know you're gonna miss, okay? You throw punches with him, okay? We need these rounds, okay? You hear me, champ? Okay. Close your eyes. Go to your left. He cannot beat us. Now we have to work a little bit. Use the hook and the right. We have to knock him out. 
Oh, Is that okay? We're gonna work now, okay? We're gonna work. Go all out, throw five, six point combinations. Okay, baby? You heard it in the corner of the challenger. They have told him he has to win a knockout. He came into this fight saying he was gonna be fighting for his life, and he'll have to fight that way in the last two rounds. I have him behind six, three, and one even. And even a little bit of concern in Camacho's corner. Conversation about you got to have these last two rounds. Now, in their case, I think perhaps just a little bit of a motivating factor. In Rosario's oh, case, pushing. a little bit of desperation. Well, Camacho just pushed Rosario there. I think he, what he's trying to do, trying to really, really frustrate him, make him rush in, and then uh, capitalize on his mistakes as he rushes in. They want Rosario to throw more punches, especially that left hook. And they want Camacho to throw five and six punch combinations. That was a very sharp combination there by Camacho. There's a cut now over under the eye of Rosario. All right, stop that spinning now. Let's go. Not a serious, not a serious point because the blood would not flow into the eye. Yeah, he's cut in a couple of strange places alongside the nose and well under the eye. Camacho spins, ties his man up. Hey, Frank, let's go. I'm waiting for a good hand, a good left hand by Camacho, because see, there it happened. Uh, Rosario now is walking right in now. He is susceptible to that uh, hey, hey. overhand left hand, left hand rather, of Camacho. You notice Camacho threw a couple of jabs, and he drops the left hand in it. This the 11th round, remember, WBC, 12-round fights. They want to see four or five punches by Camacho. And Camacho has thrown a lot of punches. There was a left hand by Rosario, and a right hand, and Camacho is rocked again. And now Rosario tries to pounce on Camacho, who's hurt. Rosario on the offense now. 35 no. seconds remaining, 11th round. Now he needs to stay on top of Camacho right now. Camacho holding on, Arthur Mercanti trying to separate them. Camacho legs are rubbery. This is when Rosario needs to work. Camacho's doing the right thing. You see he's tying him up, holding the rope. He's trying to clear that head. Mercanti throws Camacho off of Rosario. Rosario's got about. 15 seconds, and he's on him again. And Camacho is still just trying to survive. Another right hand, Camacho gets out of there. His legs are not solid. A very big round for Evan Rosario. You all right? Yeah. All right? You gotta go for it. You how gotta you go. Here, watch this. Thanks, how you feeling? All right. He's all right. Profundo. Profundo. Deep. Profundo. Deep. El último round. It's the last round. You have to knock him out. Oíste. You heard. Último round. Here's Rosario. And again, it was the left hand. It was the left hand, not the right, that did the damage as Camacho tried to move away from the right hand. As I suggested early in this show, Camacho is going to be pushed to the limit in this fight. We're into the last round. A somewhat disappointing crowd of about 10,000 tonight, but boy, they are seeing a fight. Last round, let's go. Three minutes of boxing. Rosario needs them all. And in Camacho's corner, they told him to go after it, not to stay away. Camacho is not steady That's at this point now. Step back. It's going to take another uh, 30, 30 seconds or so to clear his head. Especially as long as um, Rosario steady pouring the action on. Camacho tried to hold on again. It's a tired fighter that we're looking at in the champion. 
You see an aggressive Rosario. Now using both hands. Rosario's corner telling him he has to knock him out. It's getting closer. You know it's getting closer. Right hand, uppercut behind it. Camacho gets out of there. Camacho is still buried, not on steady, on steady legs. Definitely not. I'll tell you, though, champion's showing an awful lot of character tonight. Rosario started trying to get close, dropping that left hook. That left, left hook has been a beauty since the fifth round where, where he was able to hurt Camacho. Past the halfway mark, final round. Now he's steady coming back with the left hook as he throws his right hand. Camacho now starting to fight back a little bit. A little bit of a wrestling match. We will let you sit back, watch the last minute of this fight, listen to the crowd tell you the story. All right, break. Let's go, break. Camacho winning a very, very close decision. It wouldn't be any surprise if Rosario got it. Well, you said, Larry, there's about 10,000 people here. I'll tell you, there's 10,003 that are applauding. Great show. It was a good comeback by Camacho when he was hurt in the fifth round. Um, he fought a very game, a very uh, ex experienced fighter in Edwin Rosario. I think it's a close fight. Oh, never so hard, no. The more telling blows were by quite naturally, What's Rosario. Come on, you do a great deal of punches, though. Just a tremendous fight on both parts. Joy in Rosario's corner. And likewise, confidence amongst Hector Camacho's corner. The numbers on this fight, as you can see, Camacho throwing almost twice as many punches but not connecting on nearly as high a percentage as Edwin Rosario. In fact, neither man with a high percentage. Somewhat surprising, I would have to think. A lot of confidence on both sides here, and this one, as Larry Merchant said, Ray, you have to feel this could go either way. It can, because that last round or two, as both courts stated, hey, we need these. And Rosario was aggressive. Uh, Camacho fought back. I thought Camacho took the control and lead in the earlier rounds, but uh, Rosario came back strong after the fifth round. The man behind our HBO cameras is Marty Cohen, the 88-year-old mentor of Hector Camacho. Camacho has said he talks to Marty Cohen like Batman talking to Commissioner Gordon. There's a real love between the two of them. A tired Hector Camacho earned the payday tonight. So did this man, Edwin El Chapo Rosario. We asked him what that meant, incidentally. He said, oh, it's a fish, some kind of fish. We pushed him about it, and apparently it's some kind of a dolphin. It's not a shark, Barry. Not a shark. <laughs> that was an excellent fight. Obviously, both men feel that they have won it, and this one is going to evoke quite a crowd reaction, I'm sure. Well, they just embraced, which proves the rivalry is over, and I, I really love that in, in athletes. There was a certain bitterness between these two. We touched on it at the top of the show, and it was not hype. You had the feeling that talking to each man independently of one another, that there was kind of a deep-seated dislike. 
And I think it was not so much a dislike of the man himself, but of the man's lifestyle. I would agree with that, Barry. Both guys have something to prove to their people. Arthur Mercanti standing with both fighters now, and both are going to remember this. Well, let's get the verdict. We'll go to the ring announcer, Frank Shane, for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the voting of the officials. Judge Luis Rivera votes 114 for Rosario, 113 for Camacho. Judge Tony Castellano votes 113 for Rosario, 115 for Camacho. Uh, and Judge Dr. Stuart Kirschenbaum votes 113 for Rosario, 115 for Camacho. The winner by majority decision. Well, the crowd, as you might expect, cheers mixed with boos here, and that, of course, is going to happen in a fight that was this close. And I think it's fair to say that whichever way this decision went, you'd have to say it was the right decision. Well, you, have, you have a crowd here with that mixed feelings, and uh, I knew a decision such as this would create the controversy. A character-building victory for the champion. And for this man, I'm sure he's just going to hope for another day. And you and I were talking before this fight, Ray, that when a fight's that close and that tough, you're not really want to give a man another shot at you. Well, no question about it, because, I mean, this was a very tough fight, very physical fight for Camacho. Camacho had to become resourceful, reach down, and bring that inner strength up. You know, they said Hector Camacho had never really been hit. Well, tonight he got hit, and he showed a lot in that respect. He showed the heart of the champion. He, and he, was, he was able to come back and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe at time with, uh, against uh, Rosario. Larry Merchant is with the winner and still champion. Larry. Hector, Hector, that one tested your character a little bit. Was that the toughest fight you've ever had? Yes, yeah, the most I ever got hit. Yes, Larry, it is. This is it. I said it. After Rosario, that was my stepping stone. It sure was. How hurt were you in the fifth round when you cut your eye, the blood was in your eye, and you were being smacked around pretty good? Larry, to be honest, this is the first fight I ever got hit consistent. It was a close fight. I'll be the first one to admit it, but I was the most skillful fighter, and I proved it. It seemed that when you went to him and threw a lot of combinations and stayed on top of him, you did pretty well, but you preferred to stay outside. Larry, that guy was hammering me with things I never got hammered with before. I know I could take it, but you know me, I ain't gonna stay there and take it. <laughs> I even got cut, look. So, you know. What was, your, stepping stone. what was your first impression when the blood started trickling into your eye in the fourth? I was saying, hell yeah, this is a fight. <laughs> this is a fight. You knew somewhere along the way that you were going to get tested. What do you think of your response to the test? How do you, how can you describe it? Well, it shows my boxing skills. I know I could stay away if I want to. Because I was a good, decent puncher. He clouded me a few times the way I never got hit before. But then again, I don't gotta get hit. I make a million dollar fight, a half a million dollar fight. If I could go on and come out clean, I'll do it. Were you close to being knocked down or out in that fifth round? Because for two minutes he was chasing you around and pummeling you. Larry, like I said, if you hit me with two or three good shots, I'm gonna try the hell to not to get hit with it again. And if he stood on top of me, it was a tough fight like we all expected. I didn't think it was gonna be this hard. But the guy clobbered me a few times. <laughs> he tried, he stood on top of me, but thanks to my God gift of talent that I've managed to keep him outside. In the end of in the last couple of rounds, your corner was telling you you had to go out there and fight for your life. And yet he won those two rounds. What was in your mind at that time? Well, I thought it was gonna be a dangerous fight if I stayed there and try to switch punches for home. The guy is a hard puncher, but then again, you don't gotta be a hard puncher to knock somebody out. The guy was a real good test. Thank you very much, Hector, and now back to ringside. All right, thank you, Larry Merchant and the champion, Hector Macho Camacho. Very candid talk with the champion, Ray. I, 
I think it's almost unusual for somebody to say, yes, I was hurt. I've never been hit like that. Yes, I almost did go down, and I would have if he'd have hit me a couple of more times. Pretty candid conversation, I think. Well, I guess you have to expect some of the mixed feelings with the crowd because no one has ever seen Camacho seriously in trouble. Rosario put him in serious trouble in the fifth round with that beautiful left hook. Camacho forced his way back. A couple rounds, he became lackadaisical, but he pulled it on the later round. It was a good fight on Camacho's part, a very excellent fight on the part of Rosario. Is it hard for a champion to admit that he's been hurt? I don't see no reason why, because the replay shows it. Uh, people are watching the fight. They know what happened. You can't lie about that. All right, let's go back up to ringside now. Larry Merchant is with the challenger, Edwin Rosario. Larry? All right, I'm here with Edwin Rosario and his doctor who will interpret for us. Edwin, did you think you had won the fight and why? Pensaste que ganaste la pelea y por qué crees que la ganaste? No, yo no tuve el borde de nocao en tres ocasiones. Yo creo que yo gané esta pelea y se la dieron a Camacho, pero me van a dejar número uno en el mundo. I think that I beat him all the way and that I hope that they leave me on number one uh, rating, but I feel that I beat him all the way. Creo que el mundo se tiene que darle cuenta cuando el pueblo de aquí de Nueva York está abuchando a Camacho y a los jueces. He says that the people of New York right now are yelling at the decision that was made and they're yelling to his uh, uh, decision that he won the fight. You had him cut in the fourth round and hurt in the fifth round. Why couldn't you put him away? ¿Por qué no lo pusiste eh, cuando lo tenías malo en el quinto asalto? Creo que me lastimé el nudillo. Uh, he says that he thinks he hurt his uh, knuckles. When did you hurt your hand? ¿Cuándo te, rompe, cuando te eh, molestó la muñeca? Bueno, cuando le di el primer golpe que lo tuve al borde del nocao, en la primera ocasión. When the first time I hit him, I said he felt his knuckles that uh, were hurting him. Your corner in the last two rounds was saying that you must knock him out. That seemed to indicate they thought you were behind. La, a los últimos rounds, tu esquina te dijo que tenías que noquearlo eh, porque tal vez pensaban que estabas atrás. Bueno, ellos no querían, no creían que yo estaba atrás, ellos sabían que yo estaba adelante. Lo que pasa era que se veía más bonito Edwin Rosario noqueando a Camacho. He says that the, uh, his corner didn't really think that he was behind. It's just that uh, he, they thought it would be much better to knock him out. Thank you. Pero eh, quiero que el pueblo de Puerto Rico sepa que eh, mi barrio ingenio eh, donde recibe el barrio Gamparilla que me siento contento porque yo sé que gané la pelea. He says that he feels very happy and he wants his town in Puerto Rico, Campanilla, to feel uh, happy with him because he knows that he won the fight. Thank you very much. Edward. Gracias. A fighter is going to lose fights if he fights enough. And Edward Rosario lost a fight a couple of years and the test of that fighter is not what happens when he loses, but it happens what happens when he comes back, will he come back? Just as in, the, in a fight itself, the test of a fighter isn't whether he's gonna get hurt, or whether he's gonna get knocked down, it's what he does after that. Edwin Rosario really, in his sense, triumphed. And so, of course, did the champion, Hector Camacho. He was hurt, we had never seen him hurt, he was tested, he did come through as a champion should. I have one more word I wanna say here. Pay my respects to Milt Richmond, sports writer for the United Press International for over 40 years, a personal colleague of mine, a well-loved man all around sports, who died this week. We at HBO salute him and wish his family well. Now back to ringside. Okay, thank you very much, Larry Merchant. Ray Leonard, your comments. I guess it's probably a fact that a champion is only really tested by how he does against this toughest opponent. And tonight, I don't think there's any question but that Hector Camacho fought and beat his toughest opponent. Well, Camacho displayed the heart of a champion because he was essentially hurt in that fifth round. And he came back, he had to reach down, Barry. And I think that showed people that he can take a punch and he can deal with being hurt and coming back strong. All right, Ray, I have to ask you one other thing, not so much regards the fight we just saw, but rather regarding Sugar Ray Leonard. There's been a lot of stories in the newspapers that, yes, the fight with Marvin Hagler is going to happen. No, the fight with Marvin Hagler is not going to happen. As of the moment, what is the status? Well, everything's still speculatory because I've been hearing things from Billy Petronelli, things on the wild service. 
as far as I'm concerned, it's all speculation. And should I hear from Marvin Hagler, then I'll know for sure whether we've made anything materialize. All right, well, as to tonight, Hector Camacho is the winner in a split decision over Edwin El Chapo Rosario. And I think the simple fact is that Hector Camacho not only proved something to the 10,000 or so fans here at Madison Square Garden tonight, perhaps more important, he proved something to Hector Camacho. Well, we want to be sure and have you join us for two weeks of coverage of the most prestigious tournament in tennis as HBO Sports travels to London for Wimbledon. The action beginning Monday, June 23rd from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock every night 